It's not really a big secret that Voldemort's appearance changed drastically with the creation of his seven horcruxes, even before his unintentional horcrux with Harry. It's also no big secret that the Dark Lord wasn't aware of the extremities of the physical changes neither. I think that part of it is just swept under the carpet. What was the mental effect of watching his face literally fall apart? Watching his hair fall out, eyes changing shape and colour, nose, skin, body distortion, the works. He sacrificed quite a lot in order to split his soul and achieve immortality. So that's what I want to talk about today. I want to take a detailed look at what happened to his body, horcrux by horcrux, and discover when the changes started getting considerably noticeable. I think... This is quite an interesting topic guys, so if you do enjoy this video, then please hit the like button as it really helps the video grow. Let's get talking. The Harry Potter story has a lot of cool lore. There's always something that you come across and you think, well that's awesome, how did she come up with that? One of those areas is the Horcrux and everything it represents because it really is a fantastic piece of writing if I'm honest. It really does take the story about a boy who is being introduced to a world of happy magic and wonder to a different line of thought where I'm now thinking, Okay, this is pretty dark. I think the most frustrating part for me about the creation of the Horcrux is that JK never reveals how it's actually fully done, like the entire process. We know that one has to commit murder, but she did say more than once that the creator has to commit a rather unspeakable act to seal their soul inside an object and has vowed to never reveal what that is because she didn't want it taking the books down a path too far dark which is yeah it's quite something to take on board anyway with that being said we're taking a look at how the horcruxes affected tom riddle as he made them we're going to go horcrux by horcrux sort of a physical change horcrux timeline if that makes sense if you will because i'm sure you can all see that there is a massive difference between tom riddle and lord voldemort so let's take a look now it's clear as day that Riddle had no idea about the physical effects that the Horcrux creation would have on him. Yeah, he accepted them, but he didn't know. There was no evidence of it written down. As a matter of fact, there was very, very little of anything ever recorded on Horcruxes and what they truly represented or what the repercussions would be. It didn't tell you the rules of your situation if you die, only that you will be anchored to the world of the living by any means necessary. One is not impenetrable or exempt from physical harm or any of the sorts. Tom Riddle was just 16 when he made his first Horcrux which was the Gaunt family ring. As far as I'm aware, Herpo the Fell, the thought to be first first ever creator of the Horcrux, had only ever created one and had some serpent-like features so it seems that there's some sort of snake-like entity involved with the actual ritual. Maybe a snake is sacrificed or snake blood needed or venom or something along those lines. Anyway, anyway, by the creation of the first Horcrux, Tom Riddle was still going by his original name but would have felt somewhat hollow on the inside. Not to sound cliche but something would have felt like it was missing. Of course there's something missing, he's just stored half of his soul within an object and committed murder in order to do so, the ultimate violation of nature. I don't think there's much doubt in my mind anyway that the beginning of the physical changes were nature's way of punishing Riddle for what he had done. So Tom would begin to notice the pigmentation in his skin becoming somewhat translucent, bear in mind that he was very pale skinned to begin with. With that being said, there wouldn't be too many changes after one Horcrux, but the biggest of them all is the fact that Voldemort is no longer considered fully human as his soul is not intact. This would further affect his feelings, emotions and basically just sever any teeny tiny connections he would have had to being somewhat considerate even in the narrow slightest. He just switched off and it was that switching off that most likely fueled his desire to expand his immortality beyond any reasonable doubt. Tom then created what I'd say many of us believe to be the most powerful Horcrux or at least a Horcrux that showed its true power and proved that that it wasn't just a piece of someone's soul stored inside, but instead a very powerful offensive weapon. 
He killed Myrtle Warren in order to do so, and this is where things really began to change after he created, yes, the diary Horcrux. Tom noticed his skin getting worse, and his fingers began to slightly elongate. His hair began to noticeably thin all over his head instead of the more recognised receding hairline, you know, that M shape that we do see so common within the early stages of male pattern baldness. This was Tom's body beginning to reject the natural beauty that he once was, and make no mistake, he was an extremely handsome young man. Once again, nature retracts the features Tom has as he rejects his humanity with the splitting of his soul for a a second time. Now it's also important to mention that these two horcruxes were both created within the same space of around four months between September to December of 1943. So Tom would have experienced these changes quite quickly, so I'm not surprised he waited several more years to create his third and most likely didn't want his physical changes to be noticed by his professors at the school. He was also closer to 20 years of age when he killed Hepzibah Smith and then the Mughal Tramp when creating the Horcruxes of the Hufflepuff Cup and the Locket of Salazar Slytherin, respectively. This is the fourth violation of nature, fourth time splitting his soul and the physical changes would have been quite drastic. Tom's body began to elongate, his skin lost all pigmentation and his nose began to somewhat peel. The snake-like slits had already developed behind this nose and the cartilage began to wither away and die. His hair had thinned so much that he began to wear his cloak hooded constantly. It seemed only a matter of time before he would be fully bald. His veins almost penetrated through his skin, they were so apparent and finally his piercing blue eyes seemed to have a hidden violet glow as they transitioned to blood red. It's no surprise that Tom disappeared for so long, it can't have been enjoyable to basically watch her outer appearance melt away. That's the way I see it guys. His face, hair, features it all just peeled off, melted, disintegrated. That may have taken quite a mental effect on Tom. When he returned to Hogwarts to apply for the teaching job, it was pretty obvious that his physical appearance had been ravaged by dark magic, dark experiments and he'd gotten over the fact that he had to sacrifice how he looked in order to push the boundaries of magic further than ever before, something he had so proudly boasted to Dumbledore about. He made sure to make the most of his time back in Hogwarts and injected his dark magic into the diadem to make his fifth horcrux. This all but accelerated his already deteriorating appearance. His body had shed all his hair, his eyes now glowed red, his nose had all but crumbled off his face, he just looked like a skeleton with skin but the end result was that he had become the most powerful dark wizard of all time. His creation of his sixth horcrux in Nagini was the closing door on a total of seven pieces of one human soul that he believed would have had additional magical qualities and strengthen his overall grasp on immortality. Obviously Harry became an unwanted horcrux, it wasn't intentional, so we won't really count that as no ritual was performed, but a murder did occur in Harry's mother Lily, which may have in turn opened the door for the actual seventh Horcrux to happen. Anyway guys with that being said, that's my step by step Horcrux by Horcrux video on how Voldemort's appearance changed with each Horcrux. Thanks again for watching, have a great day and I'll see you all in the very next video.